So this is not, this is not a monologue. This is just a brief message. I'm aware of Sunday night soccer tonight between Austin and Portland. Both teams are below the line and they're fighting to get above the playoff line. And is it's starting to look like Sunday night soccer may be a thing that MLS may pursue moving forward as we head in, into next season. It wasn't a lot of that this season, but in the second half of the season, it looked like they're just experimenting with it. If Sunday night soccer becomes a thing next season, then I will do Sunday morning sermons either the last full month of the season leading to decision day or the last two months of the season leading up to decision day. The full full months now, because usually decision day is usually like, I mean, usually the NFL, excuse me, the MLS season is usually the la the last month of an MLS season is usually like one or two matches. So usually the last full month of an MLS season is usually September. So if Sunday night soccer becomes a norm in Major League Soccer, the last month, the last full month of the season leading up to decision day, Sunday morning sermon will be a thing similar to what I did for match day 30. That was Sunday night soccer between LAFC and Miami. Now, speaking of MLS match day 32 in general, one thing I can say is I was impressed. I like the teams that are fighting and that I've picked up the intensity to secure whatever seed they're trying to get in the playoffs. I love how Atlanta played. And the fact that Messi wasn't there, it, it played no role in Atlanta's performance. Even if Messi would have stepped on that field, Atlanta would have played the same. The outcome would have been the same, in my opinion. Maybe Miami would have had an extra goal. That, that, that would probably have been it. I love how Orlando played. Very competitive. Orlando looks like they can be not only a dark horse, for a uh, for a Eastern Conference run in a the playoff, they look like they can be a dark horse to win it all. I like how Houston played, even though they gave up a goal late. It is what it is. Yeah. St. Louis fought back. El Trafico, El Trafico was competitive. And even though the match resulted in a scoreless draw, the Hudson River Derby was competitive. It really was. So as we shift our attention to Sunday Night Soccer, The question that I have for both of you, Austin and Portland, are you ready to fight? Are you ready to give these last couple of games that you have to play? Are you ready to give it your all? Portland, I have no doubt in you, Portland, based on your performance 
against LAFC last week. Portland, you look like the team that I saw play in the 2021 MLS Cup playoffs. That run you made where you went to Commerce City, Colorado and you took down the number one seed in the Colorado Rapids. And you continue to take down every other opponent you faced leading up to the NYCFC match where you force that match to go to extra minutes and NYCFC needed penalty kicks in order to win the MLS Cup title. That's the same Portland team that I saw last week against LAFC. A Portland team that was rough. A Portland team that was tough. A Portland team that was aggressive. That's the kind of soccer team that I like to watch. I like to see teams that are aggressive. I like to see teams that strikes fear upon opponents. And you have that dog in you, Portland. You know, that's the slang a lot of people like to use now. Do he have that dog in him? It basically means, are you really, really tough? You got it in you, Portland. You just don't show it as much. How about you start showing us that dog that you have for the rest of this decade? Portland has one of the most underrated fan bases in the nation. One of the reasons why I like to watch Portland Timbers play is that whenever they score a goal, you have the lumberjack guy. He has the axe. And he starts to cut the tree. He starts to cut the wood. But we don't see enough of that. Because Portland doesn't score or Portland hasn't scored, scored enough this year. Portland haven't played well a lot of times this year. And they haven't showed, exhibited that dog that they have. In their heart. I think Portland has one of the best, if not the best, game day experiences in all of American sports. And I never even been to a Portland game in person. I think that lumberjack guy who always cuts the wood every time Portland scores, I think that's one of the coolest entertainment traditions and American sports. And Portland, if you make the playoffs, I want to see the lumberjack guy cut into wood. But that won't happen if you don't score. So for the sake of entertainment, Portland, get back to being that tough dog that you once were in 2021. Because I know you got it in you. Your fans know you got it in you. Your ownership group know you got it in you. Your family, your wives, your kids, your friends, they know you got it in you. But do you believe that you have it in you, Portland Timbers? And I'm talking about you, the players. Do you believe you have that dog in you? We're going to find out tonight in Sunday Night Soccer, Match Day 32. Now, as for you, Austin. What happened? What happened? There's a lot of high expectations for you this year. I mean, it, there hasn't been a drastic change in the roster. I mean, now Diego Fagundes is gone. But a lot of the fans are saying he wasn't really impactful this season. We still got Sebastian Giussi. I've 
I barely heard the name Sebastian Giussi this year. And that is strange. That is very strange. Because Giussi was a bona fide star. He was one of those guys we thought he, he was going to be in the race for the Golden Boot. Or MVP. But this year, nothing. Austin. You have to understand. And I'm talking about you, the players. You guys got to understand that you represent the capital of Texas. And Texas is one of the most popular states in America. When people from other nations, other countries, when they think about America, the, the biggest states that they name out the most is New York, Florida, California, and Texas. In no, no particular order now. But Texas is part of those big four states, the big four popular American states. New York, Florida, California, Texas. That's the big four popular states. That's the American big four when it comes to state popularity. And Austin is the capital of a big four state. So when people hear about MLS and they find out that Austin has a club in the, the capital of Texas, they're going to be wondering, is this team really good? And because you are the capital of Texas, Austin, quite frankly, more people will pay attention to you than they pay attention to Dallas and Houston, regardless of those cities being bigger in population and size. Austin, I don't know what it's going to take for you to get it together. But my message to you is similar to what I told Portland. You have that dog in you too. Look what you did last season. None of us expected you to make it as far as you did to play against LAFC in the Western Conference Final or the MLS Cup playoffs. We didn't expect that. Honestly, we expected you to be on the same level as Charlotte. A young club that's just finding itself. Trying to figure things out. Trying to get adjusted to this MLS lifestyle and MLS culture. Austin, I'm looking at your schedule right now. And I'm going to make a bold opinion. A bold expectation. That is possible. Austin. You can get 15 points within these next five games. I repeat, you can get 15 points in these next five games. You can go on a five game winning streak starting tonight. Portland is not better than you. The New York Red Bulls is not better than you. LA Galaxy is not better than you. Colorado Rapids is not better than you. DC United is not better than you. You can be on a red hot five game winning streak by the time you face LAFC on October 7th. 15 points. Who knows where you'll be? You can be at, you can quickly rise up to a top three seed. You see, the sports guys is looking out for you, Austin, with this, with this schedule for the rest of this month, these next five games. These are winnable matches. All of these matches are winnable for you. These five teams you play, they're not great. 
They're not good. They're average. All of these teams you're playing are either at, at the wild card or they're below the playoff line. None of these teams you're playing are above the wild card line. They're in your league. They're on your level at the moment, Austin. So just keep that in mind, Austin. A five game, win a five match winning streak is possible. 15 points within the next five games. And you don't have to worry about balancing a Capiones Cup. You don't have to worry about balancing a U.S. Open Cup. Your focus is just MLS. MLS season, get into the playoffs. A five match win streak is possible. But the question is, Austin, do you believe it's possible? Because if you don't believe it's possible, then it's not possible. I believe it's possible. But I'm not the one that's playing the game. So me believing it's possible is irrelevant. The fans believing it's possible is irrelevant. Me and the fans believing it's relevant only be me and the fans believing it's possible only becomes relevant once you believe that it's relevant, Austin. And I'm talking about you, the players. So starting tonight in match day 32, Sunday night soccer, we are going to see if you, Sebastian Triussi, in Austin FC, if you guys believe that it's possible to go on a five match winning streak, because all of five of these games is winnable. There's no doubt in my mind. But do you have, but what is your mindset? Do you have some form of doubt? If you don't have any doubt in your mind, it's possible. But we're going to find out tonight in match day 32. Austin, Portland, both of your backs are against the wall. And when your back is against the wall, what are you going to do? Are you going to fight? Or are you just going to lay down and suffer? We're going to find out tonight in match day 32. Sunday night soccer. <laughs>